Welcome to Westminster College Center for Financial Wellness. This lesson will focus on accrual transactions. And again, we will use the balance sheet equation as our analysis tool. In the previous lesson, all transactions had one thing in common. They all involved cash. Of course, this is not realistic as many transactions occur that do not immediately involve receiving or paying cash. This will be the focus of our lesson today. Some examples of the types of transactions that do not immediately involve cash, but eventually will, are like these listed. Basically a company buying and taking possession of uh, furniture, but not paying until later. A company performing services, but not getting paid by the customer until later. Or another could be a company receiving cash up front from a customer for services to be provided over a period of time. These types of uh, transactions have some unique characteristics that will involve using what we call accrual accounting methods. So what are accrual accounting methods? Generally accepted accounting principles, which we refer to as GAAP, followed in the United States and in many other countries requires that accountants use accrual accounting methods. Okay, whereas cash accounting recognizes a transaction only when cash is exchanged, accrual accounting requires recognition of transactions regardless of whether cash is given or received. The earnings process is more important in accrual accounting than the exchange of cash. It's important to understand that both accounting methods are actually used in the US. They both have different purposes which lend themselves to their specific use. Accrual accounting is used to record trend business transactions for the purpose of creating financial statements, which is what we're doing here. And the financial statements are used as the tools to communicate the results of business transactions. FASB, that's the governing body that creates GAAP, requires that companies use accrual accounting methods. On the other hand, accounting and cash accounting, or more correctly, modified cash accounting, is required in the US by the Internal Revenue Service. The IRS's purpose is to assess and collect taxes on a company's earnings. This is a completely different purpose from communicating the results of business transactions. The IRS has determined that cash accounting is the better method for making this assessment. Again, for our purposes of creating and analyzing financial statements, we will be using accrual accounting. So we need to learn a little bit more about how to interpret accrual accounting transactions. Accrual accounting is defined as a method of accounting, recognizing revenues when they are earned and expenses when they are incurred are owed, rather than when cash is received or paid. While this definition focuses on revenues and expenses, it also indicates that other types of transactions that don't involve revenue or expenses also be recorded. You need to realize that this means most business transactions will be split into more than one accounting transaction. For example, one transaction will record the revenue being earned and the next will record the cash being received. Okay, in this little diagram, I'm just kind of showing you <laughs> within accrual accounting, I'm so sorry, two different types of accounting transactions. Okay, because a business activity can now be split into at least two accounting transactions, we need to think about which activity comes first, the earnings process or the exchange of cash. Within accrual accounting, there are two types of transactions. They're called accruals and deferrals. And I'm sorry, we use accruals in two senses. Now, one for the accrual accounting method and one for accrual type transactions. Ugh. Whereas in the last lesson we learned, uh, we earned the revenue and received the cash in the same transaction with accrual accounting, the earning or incurring 
will happen in one transaction and the cash will be exchanged in another related transaction. If the earned slash incurred process happens first with cash being exchanged later, this is called an accrual type transaction. So that's what the items at the very top are, this, the accruals right here. If the cash is received or paid first with the earnings process happening later, this is called a deferral and that's on the bottom of this little diagram. Okay, both accruals and deferrals are recognized or used in the accru accrual accounting method. Okay, so similar to our last lesson, you will be actively participating in analyzing some business transactions. So please access, open and save the CFW Accrual Transactions Exercises Workbook. We will follow the same analysis methodology, first looking at the impact on the balance sheet accounts and then determining if there's an impact on income statement accounts. So pause your video now and access that and review that workbook. All right, now we're gonna go into analyzing some transactions. All right, on June 20th, Tamed Lawn Care, TLC, mowed lawns and billed its customer $1,000 for the service. The terms of the agreement are that the customer pays within 15 days. All right, so our analysis in this transaction, TLC has completed the service, thus it has earned the related revenue. However, TLC has not yet been paid. Using our balance sheet equation, I'm gonna flip over to that screen for you. Let's make that a little bit bigger, shall we? All right. Let's see, so TLC earned the revenue. So we know that retained earnings is gonna be impacted, if you remember from our last lesson. But since TLC hasn't received the cash yet, haven't got the cash, instead they record the amount that they earned in an asset account called accounts receivable. So that's right here. This account represents just that account amounts that are receivable are promised by customers. So our retained earnings account is going to increase by the thousand and our accounts receivable will increase by the 1000. All right. So assets increased and our claims increased and our balance sheet equation is balanced. All right, since retained earnings is impacted, we need to determine if the income statement is involved here. All right, so we've already talked about that this was a wealth generating activity. So it should be reflected in the income statement. So revenues, will be impacted because it's a wealth generating activity. If revenues increase, remember that net income increases. And then we check to see if net income and retained earnings are exactly the same, and they are. So we're done recording this transaction. Okay, to step back and analyze this transaction, how it's different from our last class, we can see that the earnings process is complete, but instead of getting cash, which we're used to, the asset they get instead is a promise from their customers to pay in the future. This is AR. So the next logical transaction related to this would be that the cash would be received. All right, so on this transaction on June 28th, TLC received $1,000 cash from a customer in payment of lawns, mowed, and billed in June. So this is the transaction that relates to the previous one. And in here, TLC is receiving payment for the service that they already provided and billed earlier. So looking at our balance sheet equation, cash is gonna be our asset that's increased this time, right? But it's not because they earned it today, 
Instead, TLC is just receiving the cash in place of the other asset, which was AR. So the AR asset will decrease by the 1,000, while the asset cash will increase by the 1,000. There is no earnings or wealth generating activity involved in this transaction. What happened, that happened in the previous transaction when TLC completed the service. Um, all that's happening here is that they're switching assets. A TLC is not better off because of this transaction. Um, they did not earn or use up wealth. So we are not going to look at the income statement, are we? Okay, I'm gonna go back and look at our diagram that we used a few screens ago. If you think about it, this set of transactions, what happened is that TLC earned the revenue up front and build their customer, and then they received the cash and payment later. So this was a set of transactions that would fit under an accrual type transaction. All right, let's go on to another one. August 2nd, TLC repurchased $50 worth of gas from P&G Gas. P&G gives TLC an invoice with terms requiring payment in 20 days. All right, so TLC is purchasing something that has limited future value. It's likely that the gas will be used up in a day or two, right? And TLC isn't even paying for the gas. <laughs> so let's review this using our balance sheet equation. All right, so we're gonna use the retained earnings account because TLC is consuming wealth here, right? So they're purchasing something that's being consumed, if you remember that from our last lesson. Um, but since TLC has not paid for anything yet, it has an obligation to pay in the future. So that means it has a liability. It's an obligation to pay somebody external to the company. So retained earnings is going to decrease and a liability is going to increase. So let's go ahead and put our decrease in retained earnings of the 50. And the account we used to indicate um, obligations to pay a vendor that's billed me in the future is this accounts payable. So that is actually going to increase because I am oh, I now owe an external vendor. All right, so does our balance sheet equation balance? And it does because the net of this equity claims decrease and external vendor claims increase is zero. So claims of zero impact and assets weren't impact impacted at all. So our balance sheet equation is imbalance. Uh, this is the first time we've seen this kind of transaction and it's actually called a claims exchange type transaction. And you can kind of see why we're, we're exchanging from an equity claim to a liability claim. All right, is the income statement impacted? And yes, because TLC consumed earned equity claims, right? They reduced them. So that is sort of the definition of an expense. So our expenses will go up which means net income goes down. And then we check to see if net income and retained earnings are the same, and they are. Now, if you can't quite remember the analysis for the income statement and the relationship of revenues and expenses to net income, you need to go back to our previous lesson and review that. I'm just assuming here that you remember. All right, so we're done with that transaction. Let's go on to the next. All right. On August 18th, TLC pays P&G gas for gas purchased earlier in the month that was billed. So this is obviously the second portion of the business transaction where we're actually gonna pay for the gas. 
All right. Um, since TLC is paying the vendor, we're going to go ahead and look at our balance sheet equation and assume that our cash is going to be impacted. Okay, but since TLC already recorded the liability, we need to also reduce that liability, right? Because they don't owe it to the vendor anymore. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce my cash by 50 and then also reduce my accounts payable by 50. So now I show that I owe nothing for accounts payable and my cash has gone down. My balance sheet equation is um, in balance. And now we have to think, did I use up wealth? And I actually did not in this transaction. That happened in the prior transaction when they went into the exchange with the gas company to purchase the gas. So this doesn't impact the income statement at all. All right, next one. All right, on September 1st, TLC paid $2,400 cash for a two-year insurance policy. All right, so TLC has purchased and paid for something that has future value. So you remember that means we haven't consumed it yet. It's, it's something that I of value, it's stuff of value that the company has um, rights to. We look at our balance sheet equation. They've already paid for it. So that means my cash is gonna go down. And a thing of value, future value is an asset. So they haven't consumed anything yet. They're actually swapping assets. They're taking their cash and, and getting something else. And it looks like we have a prepaid insurance account right here in our assets. So that looks like an appropriate account to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and decrease my cash by the 2,400 and increase my prepaid insurance for the 2,400. My balance sheet isn't in balance because zero equals zero. I have not impacted retain earnings or consumed any wealth. I just switched the composition of the assets we have. So the income statement is not touched. All right, let's go to the second of the series of transactions. On September 30th, TLC adjusted the prepaid insurance account to recognize that one month's worth of insurance has been paid, has been used up. All right, let's go to our balance sheet equation. All right, so TLC is recording the activity of using up a portion of an asset that it previously purchased. So the activity really is just the passage of time, isn't it? But you can understand that as time passes, the prepaid insurance asset is getting used up. All right, so retained earnings will be used to record the use of wealth, as always, or consuming some of the prepaid insurance. So that's what we're going to do. Um, likewise, the prepaid insurance account that we previously set up is being used too. So I'm going to go ahead and decrease my prepaid insurance. My name is Rick Haskell, and I'd like to thank you for watching this video as part of the Bill and Vive Gore School of Business's Business Certificate Series. I'm a finance professor in the business school, where I'm also the director for the college's Center for Financial Wellness. The Business Certificate Series is offered through the center as part of our outreach through the Gore School of Business. You can follow us on social media through Westminster's Instagram, YouTube, LinkedIn, or Facebook pages. You can use the QR codes provided or simply go to these websites. Thank you.